So the first thing that I did in order to make my Ursula costume is I wrapped my entire body in cling wrap. And then from there I used duct tape and that way I could create a pattern in order for my fabric and my um, armor pieces to fit properly. Uh, if you don't know this method, you can probably look at other cosplay videos such as Kamui cosplay and Kenpatsu cosplay videos. Now I make sure my box cutter is nice and sharp because if it's not, then you're gonna snag and get rips in your EVA foam and you definitely do not want that. But once it's nice and sharp, you simply trace it onto the EVA foam and cut it out. And I use contact cement to glue all the pieces together. Now I got my EVA foam from Joann's. It's the Yaya Han brand. It's, I think, a yard long and two feet wide. I don't know, it's a pretty big piece of EVA foam and so I highly recommend it and it's at a great price. Now I use a heat gun in order to shape all of my foam um, and I'm very sorry if you're someone who doesn't wanna buy the heat gun, you have to use a heat gun. Um, if you use a hair dryer or anything like that, it simply will not work and you'll be sitting there for hours trying to get it to work. Um, so you will have to purchase a heat gun in order to work with EVA foam if you've never worked with it before. But I am fading. But yeah, you can see there that it kind of rounds out my foam and gives it the perfect shape. Now, if you need any more help uh, to stabilize or keep the shape of your EVA foam, if you find that it's just not enough to use heat, you can also use warbler or if you have any scraps of warbler laying around you can use those as well to help the shape and help it mold along e. and then from there i just go ahead and shape it to my body so that you know all the pieces will fit correctly um and when it's i guess cooling down would be the word i use rubber bands to wrap around it to help it shape But you can see me adding heat and shaping. It's actually a lot of fun, more fun than it looks like, trust me. You can get a uh, heat gun off of Amazon for really great prices. So I would definitely recommend that. When I am using um, the contact cement or the E6000, I go ahead, put some on, and then I use another piece of foam to kind of um, thin it out so that it's easier. Because what you wanna do with contact glue, you want to go ahead and make sure that it is kind of dry, um, has dried down a little bit so that it's kind of tacky. That way you can put it to itself and it would adhere immediately. You won't have any problems with gluing or anything like that. And what I use to shape or smooth out the foam is a tack light or a Dremel. Personally, I have the Tack Light brand, but they're extremely similar, if not the exact same. Just use my rotary tool, and I use the sanding bit on the top, and I use it on a level three. I also highly recommend that you purchase a rotary tool or a Dremel. Um, the Tack Light is the cheapest option from what I've seen online, price-wise, between a Dremel. So I would advise that. I really like working with it, but never, ever, ever, use or shape foam or even use contact cement in things without having a well ventilated area, a dust mask, goggles, and gloves. Um, I used all of those. I didn't use gloves for the contact cement, uh, which is not good, but I just didn't. But you should. <laughs> I advise that you should. And you can see me here shaping the EVA foam pieces. Um, the reason why you want to be able to work in a ventilated area is because these fumes from the cement or the glue can be quite toxic and you just don't want to suffer from that. And then on top of that, as you're dremeling with the rotary tool, there's going to be a bunch of dust particles floating in the air and we do not want those in our lungs. It'll make us sick, harm us, and we just don't want that to happen. So if you don't have like a place or if you can't go outside, opening all the doors and windows please do that. From there, I go ahead and I take two strips of Velcro and I'm going to hot glue them onto the pieces I want to stick together that I'm using to put onto my body. So you can see here on my wristband, I'm just adding a little bit of glue and then I'm putting on the Velcro. That way, 
I don't have to slip it on over my hand. I can just wrap it around and Velcro it to my arm. I also end up doing that with my breastplate and um, the shoulder blade armor pieces along with the ones that are at my pelvis, which you'll see later. And I use a lot of hot glue and contact cement. Those little round circles you see on my breastplate that I'm gluing on with hot glue, I cut those and sealed them myself. You can buy them at Joann's pre-cut, but I just like to do it myself because I can get the sizes that I want. And I use wood glue to prime all of it. But before you can prime your piece, you need to make sure that you heat seal the foam. So glue it all together and then heat seal it again with your heat gun. Um, that will kind of keep the crumbly bits um, together and really smooth out the foam for you. And that preps it for the primer you're going to use. I like to use the wood fusion glue or any other type of wood glue. You can also use Mod Podge and Plasti Dip. Plasti Dip is way more toxic, so I would advise you be outdoors if you're going to use that. And then for my base color, I'm just spraying all the armor pieces with a gunmetal gray. And you can see those pieces right there. I actually really like the gray, but I ended up coloring it with a different gray. It's the Folklore brand. And that gray just turned out so cool. Man, <laughs> I, I really recommend the metallic folklore colors, um, except for the gold. The gold is a little less pigmented, um, but the gray, the silver, fantastic. Like, fan flippin -tastic. And then from there, I primed the purple parts with a darker purple so that the light purple would stand out later. And then I took a break and moved on to the wig. Now the way I put rollers onto my wigs is not the professional <laughs> way and I should not recommend you do it the way I do um, because there is a standard way to put those in. Um, but I just am a lazy styler when it comes to my own projects. So I just put them on with my base knowledge of putting in rollers. And from there, I just make sure that everything is the way I need it. Um, I did make sure to add some of the smaller rolls to the front of the face so that I would have tighter curls to kind of frame my face just a little bit. And the wider ones on the top and in the back. That way the curls are just a smidge looser. So it, again, it'll frame my face and it'll frame the People ask me where I get my wigs. I do purchase all of my wigs off of Amazon. You can do Arta wigs, but since I style them myself, I don't really want to, if I mess up or damage the wig, I don't want to damage something so expensive. So I just buy my wigs off of Amazon. And this is how my rollers set. You can see it's a little sloppy, but that's all right. I'm gonna go ahead and take a bag, put it over and steam it. This steaming method works great. Just again, put a plastic bag over, take your steam and steam it. <laughs> and it'll be just fine. Um, I do this until the water in my little hand steamer runs out and that works perfectly fine for me. Sometimes I do it twice. But you don't want to take this plastic bag off because you want to make sure that you coat the entire thing and keep that steam locked inside. That is what's going to give you the nice curls that you deserve. And I like to take my finger and finger coil the curls to kind of help it along. You can see me doing that right here. And then from there, I take another break and I go into the seashell details. I glued some shells onto the backs of old earrings. Um, and then I glued them also onto some bobby pins to stick into the wig itself. And I use the contact cement or the uh, E6000 glue in order to do that. 
and it worked perfectly fine. Um, be careful though, because you will get glue on your hands, which you shouldn't be doing. Don't be like me. Be better than me, guys. Be better. But yeah, I totally did that. <laughs> and the glue that I use, or the hairspray, is got to be glue. That is the best brand I've found for styling wigs. And what I did was I took a little thing of polyfill that I actually use later in the tentacles and just put a little puff, figured out how much I needed, and then started teasing the underlayer of the poof. Um, a really good thing to do is to use a blow dryer to heat seal the hairspray. That works fantastic. But you can see me here um, styling the wig. And I'm really just rough styling it because I like to take my wigs off and put them onto myself to figure out what looks good and what doesn't because you can style a wig and it'll look pretty but then once you put it on someone it doesn't frame their features or look as good as it can on them. So I do light dusting of hairspray, I put it on and then from there I take it off and adjust again and then completely seal it with loads of hairspray. You can also use the got to be glue gel um, if you're doing a lace front, put that onto the edge of your hairline. Take your blow dryer, blow it on for a couple seconds. Don't let it get too dry, just tacky. And then pull your wig down and that should secure your lace to your forehead. It's a lot easier than using spirit gum. Trust me, you don't want to suffer with that. I just add on my seashell. I will say the hardest thing is um, placements and figuring out placements, but I think I did a good job of figuring that out. You can see here, I know it's kind of hard to see because of how white the wig is, but yeah. You can see that I placed the shells in and that is exactly how it comes out in the end. And then I go back to working on the armor. I'm just going in between these little rock formations I created and putting in purple in between to kind of give it like it's kind of like it's glowing between the silver. So I'm doing that, but I don't actually want to do a glow in the dark one. So I just went for a matte purple. Now I'm going to go ahead and take the Buffalo Snow. I got this also from Joann's. Pretty much everything is from Joann's. And I'm going to use that to fill in the tentacles. I'm just using a silky, well not silky, a more of a satin purple lining um, with a uh, kind of metallic deep, deep purple um, stretch knit. Look how plushy. <laughs> Sorry. But yeah, that's my tentacle without any polyfill in it. It's like a little smushy little thing. And from there, I made sure to take this outside. This is my cape. I just put a bunch of holes, rips, and burns into the bottom of it to kind of give her a more grungy look. I took some cherry red spray paint and then a mixture of acrylic and water paint that I mixed together to make this kind of mucky brown and then sprayed them and put them all along the cape. Woo! So that part was all done woohoo i did the necklace and the little flap in front and now we've got to work on the prop so originally i was going to do the trident um but i wanted to give ursula more credit than that so i decided to make her her own personal staff um so i'm going to take that wood fusion glue that i was using earlier some water mix it together and i'm going to use that to prime the staff it is just a thick one inch wooden dowel with EVA foam in two places, the very bottom and the center. That way when I hold it, you know, it doesn't hurt my hand because of the wood and it's way more comfortable for me to hold. I also molded out of air dry clay, uh, the same seashell that Ursula used when she was taking Ariel's voice and I made the necklace out of it. But then I thought, ooh, let's go ahead and make that the top of the staff. So that's what I did. Uh, you can kind of see the white at the very top there. But yes, so I have that at the end and I used contact cement and um, glue to hold it together. And then I go ahead after it's primed with like five or six layers of glue, I painted it entirely black except for the white clay. And then on the padded parts where my hands will be, I made it that gunmetal silver. Just look how great that silver is.
man. And again, that is the Folklore brand. I just love that. That's fantastic. And I did about two layers of that just for, um, just for good measure. The black I ended up doing around three coats of it. And from there, we're gonna start on the seashell. But this is what it looks like with those two done. See, and you can kind of see what I was talking about earlier. The gold from this brand is just not that great. And I did prime the clay too to make it easier and more opaque, but yeah, it's just very sheer. So I ended up doing about eight layers <laughs> um, at the very tip, but you can see that. And I took some very, very thin ribbon as well and wrapped it around the entire staff. I did a light purple at the very top and then a medium purple at the bottom. So that there are two different purples going along with the silver, gray, and gold. Kind of add some flair. Woo! <laughs> and that is the completed costume. Now that this prop is done, we are done all together. And here we are. The only way to get what you want is to become a human yourself. My dear, sweet child, that's what I do. It's what I live for, to help unfortunate merfolk like yourself, poor souls with no one else to turn to. <laughs> oh, and there is one more thing. We haven't discussed the subject of payment. I'm not asking much, just a token, really a trifle. You'll never even miss it. 